Okay, we are live. Welcome, are welcome. Live. Welcome and happy Thanksgiving day after. Happy Black Friday. Happy um, Thanksgiving I'm weekend. That's right. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. My name is Carrie Aaron and my co I am Marcy Brockman. And special guest tonight, we have Kiara Colson. Hello. And, we hope, and let me just say this now as we get started. I hope that the connection will be good. I had a couple of uh, calls today that have the two two of the people that I was talking with, their internet went down. Black Friday, everybody's shopping and so forth. Kiara is in Tennessee visiting her grandparents and she's in the mountains. So if we lose this connection, we apologize and we'll try to come back on in a couple of days. But this is in preparation for landing again with Marcy Brockman and myself, Carrie Aaron, and uh, today with Kiara Colson here. And in preparation in, uh, for landing, what uh, Marcy and I try to do here is to talk about um, what we can do to prepare people for landing those ideal jobs, those careers that they want. And this can be professional people, people currently in the workforce or people who, who have been laid off from their jobs in the workforce. This can be college students, but it can also be high school students. And yes. Marcy, um, if you've watched any of our shows before, Marcy uh, is a, a high school teacher in Long Island, New York. Long Island, right? <laughs> right? That's what no, anyway, I don't know. That maybe not such a great accent, but um, anyways, my, my family was from up in that area as well, but from Long Island, and she teaches 11th and 12th graders English. Right. And um, so we'd like to talk about those issues that can help people. And, you know, I, I actually asked Marcy to join me in this uh, in preparation for landing because of the fact that, you know, we really should be teaching high school students a lot of things that people really don't get until they're well, maybe they're lucky to get some of this in college, but you know, I've been in the work, I've been a professional trainer now for over two decades. Um, and my corporate job before that, I was in charge of education, training, and professional development for the last three years. And I worked for uh, Bell South Telecommunications down in Atlanta, Georgia. And I had a, a nine state region and over 600 employees. And a lot of the training that we brought in, like critical thinking and uh, creative problem solving and decision making, you know, why aren't we teaching this stuff to kids in high school? But instead, I've got people in my classes that are in their 40s, 50s and 60s, in some cases, just learning a lot of these skills that, oh, my goodness, wouldn't it be great if we got, you know, at least had electives like that in high school and certainly in, in college. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that's the case so much. Marcy, have you come across that much? No, before? not at all. Not at all. There are very few, uh, if any, programs like that I've ever heard of, unfortunately. Yeah. And there should be. Absolutely. They're basic life skills. I know I teach, um, I teach, um, I teach negotiation skills and um, conflict resolution techniques. And wouldn't it be nice if we learned how to deal with conflict at a younger age? You know, well, yes. <laughs> And that's something that you're going to face your entire life. So to have some of those tools available. But tonight we have Kira Colson, as I said. And um, Kira, I just want to ask you some basic stuff. And I want to ask you a little bit about your book. And then I want to ask you about your career quest journey. Okay. Um, so um, how, you have a couple of other siblings, don't you? I do. I have McKenna Colson. She's a ninth grader. Aaliyah Colson, who is a seventh grader, and my brother Tegan Colson, who's a sixth grader. Wow. Sixth grader. That's a full house. Is his name Tegan? Oh, that's like my dog. <laughs> oh, pretty name. So you are the oldest in, in your family of the four children. Now, tell me what your siblings think of your newly fame, newly found fame of writing this book and being a best coming, uh, best selling author at the age of 16. Now she's 17. Now she's much older, but, um, but what do your siblings think about this? What kind of example are you setting for them? Um, well, of course they're proud of me, but you know, they have their own way of showing it. Um, but I do try to be a great example to them and showing them they can do whatever they want. We all have completely different completely different dreams. I don't really expect any of them to be an author and for spay fiction stuff like I do, but um, they definitely have amazing purposes. Like McKenna, for example, she's a musician, so she's in the writing form of music. So that's her realm. So we all have different realms and I really try to build on their purposes and try to speak into them and inspire them to go as far as they 
can and farther with us because like our dream as a family is to work together because my father's an author my mom's an inspiring author so our goal is really to be a family that doesn't get separated when we're older like that happens to a lot of people. so we really want to build our purpose as a family instead of individuality that is so that's very cool <laughs> that is cool that you guys have such a vision for your family any others that are thinking about writing a book um, my sister Aaliyah is um, came out doing a devotion for middle schoolers, and she's a middle school, so it's kind of cool, like a perspective for that. Wow, that is cool. Well, let me show everybody a copy of your book, um, and then I'll, I'm going to show them a copy of your dad's book too, because he is an author. But um, I want to ask you something about that. So let me show you her book. Here is Twin Tales, and it's really hard for me to figure out how to get this in here. So um, Carrie and I wore purple today just for oh, your book. Yes, and I wanted to ask you, did you notice, did you notice anything about us? We, we dressed up for you. We wore purple so we could match your book cover. And this is her theme color. Um, so tell us a little bit about Twin Tales. Not so much so, of course, to give away the plot and everything, but a little bit to people that might be listening and, and go, wow, what, what is that book about? So tell us a little bit about it. Um, well, Twin Tales about a mother mermaid who is separated from her two twin daughters. And it follows the perspective of all three of them, the mother um, and the two twins as they journey to find each other again. And in the book, I tried to implement different storylines and lessons because it's a for the ages eight to 14, it's a chapter book and they fight villains, there's pirates, there's sharks, but there's also life lessons such as, for example, there's four different kingdoms that are falling apart because of the disbalance of the loss of the mermaids. And they're fighting because one, they have different color tails, they have different personalities, but in order to defeat the evil um, Mer King that has took over the throne, they all the kingdoms have to come together and learn to work together, no matter the color of their tail, nor the type of personalities that they have. Cool. That's very so cool. Yeah, diversity and everything. So how did you come up with this story? Like, I write business books. Okay, here's a copy of my book. It's called Project Career Quest. And it is to help people that are looking for work, that are looking to land, right? Uh, so it's a business book. And I'm always so amazed when I read books. And Marcy's book, by the way, is, um, you might be able to see it behind her, it's called Mission to Land. And it is her autobiography. So that's a, a book that she knows a lot about because it's about herself. Mine is about business, and I know a lot about that because I've been doing it a long time. But I'm always amazed at people who write stories that it's not based, you know, like obviously you've never been a mermaid, or you know, or, you know, how did you come? Or up so with we think. Well, at least <laughs> think so, um, but how did you come up with the story? Um, well, I know that I wanted to connect first with the younger generation, and. When I was in fourth grade, mermaids were always the thing, you know, that's a one way to get to connect with younger children. So when I'm writing, I really just step into my character's perspective, what I think they would have liked. And I like to use things that I've struggled with to give my character personalities. And I always start with the name meaning. So mm -hmm. all my characters have meaning um, with their names and that's how I start to develop their personalities. And then for example, the separation part, my family's great. It doesn't involve anything separation from my sisters or my um, mom or anything like that. But when I moved away from Tennessee, I my four best friends, we'd known each other since kindergarten. And so we'd known each other for almost a decade. And it was really hard when I was separated from them. I wasn't able to see them anymore. And because they were basically like sisters to me. And so I feel like that's really where I got the separation detail when it comes to mm -hmm. my book so I really try to use real life situations and real life pull from inside yes yeah cool and so you said one of the things you said is you really wanted to, to connect with the younger generation or younger kids or something like that why is it that you want to connect so much with them what is, is it because um, of your siblings or um well when I first started I knew that one, I'm a big sister, so that's the personality I have. And I knew that to step into the water, because my purpose and my dream is to inspire teens all from ages 8 mm -hmm. to 18, but I knew I couldn't start with such a large niche. So I decided to arrow in to ages 8 to 14, because that's the ages of my siblings. 
And I knew that I already had that big sister personality. And that was a really, not necessarily easier way, but it was a way where I felt a little bit more comfortable when I was making such a large step towards my future. Wow. Marcy, I am amazed at all the thought she's put into this. Absolutely. That, that I think it's cool that, that you're gearing your book towards the age range of your siblings. So you, you almost had a test audience, you know, and, and you're acutely aware of the things that they would be interested in and the ways in which you should explain them so that they understand and relate and connect so that you're able to make your message um, make, make sense and hit home. So it's a great thing. Now you've developed some of this into like a coaching program too, didn't you? So that yeah. you're able to actually take the lessons that you're, that you're teaching through your mermaids into the lives of like real people. Can you tell yeah. us about that? I have a teen success coaching program and that's for any teen ages. Um, even if they're mature enough, but usually eight years old, to 18. And it's directly tied to helping teens discover their divine destinies through one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. Um, books that I'm writing and story lessons through that way. And if they want to be a writer, I will help them and walk them away in discovering what exactly do they want to write on? What is the story they have? Because in my opinion, everyone has a story. You just got to figure out what it is. Absolutely. And that's what I really want to help. Whatever, because everyone has a different road. Everyone has a different path. So each coaching is different depending on what path they want to walk down on. So it's very one-on-one, -on -one, discovering who they are, what they want to do, and what is the next steps. For example, I personally am really great at productivity. So if they need productivity tips um, or they just need some guidance on how to wake up in the morning, schedule an hour of just the writing, because it's a lot of work, but you really sure inspiration and the want and the will to do what you want to do and just do it. Wow. Wow. That makes sense. Books don't write themselves. That's for sure. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You know, I know that your dad wrote a book. In fact, I have it right here. So we'll give him a little plug too. her father, Dr. Tony Colson. Oh, let me get in there. Okay. It's called Unlocking Your Divine DNA. I know one time I was talking to your dad and I said, oh, something about his book. I mentioned it. I said, unleashing your divine DNA. And he goes, it's unlocking your divine DNA. I said, <laughs> Oops. You unlock it, then you unleash it. Right. So I thought that was, you know, that should be his follow-up book. But anyway, um, so I know your dad wrote that book. Now, was he the inspiration for you to write or is, or is writing something even before he wrote a book? Is that something that you've always loved doing or, you know, what's the connection between you and your dad or, or you're, you know, really wanting to write this book? And um, well, I've always been a writer, um, whether that's from making mini plays, um, short stories, but I never realized that becoming an author, speaker and coach could be a true profession until my dad wrote his book and won his award um, in 2018 for author mm -hmm. and that's when I really realized that's what I want to do that was my passion to become an author writer speaker to inspire others because my dad and my mom have both spoke into me they've told me to I can do whatever I want they've exposed me to different types of I've been like yeah that's not what I want to do <laughs> this but they really helped guide me towards what I want to do and because I know a lot of teens don't have that guidance and that um, role model, and sometimes, you know, they don't necessarily want to listen to someone who's older than them. Sure. Um, another reason I want to be able to be a role model and a guidance, just like my parents were to me and sewed into me for my future and how I want to help others as well. That's wonderful. And I, I think based on the the effervescent personality that you have and your kind face that that and your sweet nature that you're going to have a lot of impact and be of great benefit to the kids who you are who are honor um <clears throat> who will be blessed to, to work with you um i know teaching high school and being a mom of not so long ago teenagers uh there are a lot of times where i might say the same exact thing as a peer and they hear it from the peer it's a brand new idea you know, like totally dismiss mom. Mom can be as cool as cool can be and still gets ignored. It's just the way it goes. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful thing that you're bringing this wisdom and motivation and inspiration and, and open-mindedness with focus to, to other kids. It's 
quite cool. You must be quite yeah. proud of yourself. That's pretty that. awesome. Yeah. Where did you learn all those skills? Did it come natural to you? Or you said you're very focused and productive and. Um, it's definitely, I definitely take after my dad when it comes to being productive and I've always been a straight A student, but that's because my parents, they never forced me to make A's or forced me into doing anything. The only th they would let me try things. And if I committed to it, I would have to finish it. But after that year, I wouldn't have to do it again if I didn't want to, but I had to finish commitment. And that's yeah. the reason that and it's just different lessons my parents they kind they didn't force me into anything but they led me in the direction that they wanted and that was a I'm really grateful for that because it was always as if I was making the decision but there was really their wisdom that was being poured into me and everything that I've learned has really come from my dad's inspiration his word and my mom's um, role model that she is for me sure you know, one thing I know about your, your parents is that um, your father's a pastor and, and they have lived in like a lot of different countries. Tell me how many countries. It's like a huge number, like 60 something or. It's, I think, I cannot, it's, I think it's like 41 or so. I wow. can't exactly now, um, but it's quite a bit. They, when they got married, they left for uh it's europe so i think it was like uh, greece i think and they lived there for like six months and then they no wait they went to hawaii for their honeymoon came back washed their clothes and left to greece <laughs> that's how they so that's that was pretty great and i i definitely want to travel like they have and they've been to so many different places and experienced so many different things were but, they just on vacation to all those places or they were living and working there um they were under ywam it's a missionary um we do a missionary work oh uh, so, okay different yeah. it's the first grade and that's the last time i've left the country but it was on a missionary trip so the, it's really cool all the stuff they've been able to do and so god's word into different was all this before you all were born for the most part okay, most okay. then they settled down in tennessee and started having kids right yes okay cool cool now, one of the questions I was going to ask you is what's next for you? And I know Marcy's already asked you about the, the coaching program that you've done. And you've talked a little bit about your coaching program, but you are a junior in high school. And this is about the age where, you know, with Marcy students are juniors and seniors. And they start thinking about, you know, am I going to go to trade school? Am I going to, you know, work at the corner um, hardware store or, or wait tables? Or am I going to go to college? And get a, you know have a professional career and they start thinking about all these things and and then if they do want to go to college because my book is geared towards um career-minded you know more the the career-minded uh, folks that are going to college or going into a professional work and um so they start thinking okay where do i want to go to college you know what do i want to major in and, and again like myself and marcy and i talked about this in our very first episode that um neither one of us really know what we wanted to major in and i kind of threw you know, I call it the dartboard method and I came out with something, but, um, you know, what are your plans? I see you've got a, a you, you want to stand up and show the audience your shirt there. This is Tennessee volunteers there, right? Cause I know your dad's a UT guy, a Tennessee guy. Um, is that where you're thinking about going to college or do you have other plans or have you given it much thought? Um, you know, junior years when people start really thinking about that. Um, I'm definitely that person who spends like a couple hours and like you get randomly lost and you look at all these different colleges and it's really a crazy decision um I've thought about Lee University which is where uh, my parents went my dad also went to UT for a couple courses as well um Lee University is in Tennessee um then I've also thought about Baylor Northwestern Ohio State I'm kind of in the area where I'm like I don't really know. And I'll probably apply to multiple places. Just Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I do know I want to go out of state. I don't necessarily want to go in South Carolina. I kind of want to get out there a little bit. You don't want to be a Gamecock? Mm, not really. <laughs> yeah, you can come up here to North Carolina. We'd love to have you up here. So we've got lots of great schools around here. Um, so what do you think as a, if you're, if you're looking for a career, are you looking for a career then as you, if you seem to indicate 
to continue writing and coaching and consulting and things like that. So are you thinking about majoring in communication or something along that line? Yes, I've been thinking about either communication or business. Um, because I know that I want to be an author, speaker, coach, traveling, um, holding conferences, a lot of the area kind of like what Carrie Oberbrunner does as a living. Uh -huh. That's the genre that I want to move towards, um, which I know that college is really where I'm going to get more life experience that I'm going to be able to expand in my stories and my vocabulary um, as I move towards writing more young adult fiction. Very you know, cool. Marcy, Marcy, you need to um, not not now, but connect with her and um, make sure that her school has that same program that you guys have that really helps when people plug in what they want. Remember oh, the Naviance. Program? Yeah, there's a, an app. I don't know if your guidance department at your high school uses it, but uh, N-A-V-I-A-N-C-E. And it uh, it helps. Um, there are a school accounts and there are parent t uh, parent uh, ch student accounts that help you narrow down colleges based on any criteria you could think of. Uh, Male-female ratio, um, environment, geography, uh, Greek life, sports, division of sports, you know, all sorts of clubs, majors, you know. Size of schools, that kind so, of stuff. Yeah, ev every possible criteria. And you can keep narrowing and narrowing and narrowing and changing your focus. But what it also does is it compiles all of your if you're taking standardized tests like the ACT or the SAT, which a lot of kids aren't doing this year because of the COVID thing. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, most schools that I've heard of are test optional for that reason for this next academic year. Um, but it helps narrow down school choices. Um, I used it with both my kids, my biological kids, because their high school uh, subscribe to it. It's a subscription based thing. So your high school might, I don't know, you should ask your guidance department. Um, and my the high school where I teach uses it also. So it helps compile teacher recommendations and um, every possible aspect of your college, I mean, uh, high school diploma graduation materials and your college application package. It's all assembled. But what it also does is this actually statistically kind of nerdy and great is that so let's say you're the school that you're thinking of takes like their minimum GPA for their for the their average candidate, let's say is like a 3.54. Then it will give you like a I don't know what it's called in statistics, but a graph where it compares your grades with what's accepted by that school. And so then you can see in a little bubble in, in the graph, the, the, the prediction of that, whether you will get and get accepted easily, or it would be a total reach, or, you know, it might be, you know, we're not sure could go either way kind of thing. So it really helped us sort of calculate the chances that my kids would get into the schools that they wanted. It's actually a, an amazing program. Yeah. <laughs> they should yeah, pay so me. They should pay me to do their commercials. <laughs> I know you, you've been promoting them a lot on the different uh, episodes we've done. So connect with her afterwards, Kier, and make sure um, that you find out about that. Because what a great way to do that. Because to have that available to you to help narrow down some of those options and, and really make sure that you're looking at schools that would be the best fit for you. So. Well, way back in the day, I mean, I graduated high school in 1986. And in 1985, we were looking for colleges and there was no internet, no cell phones. Everything was postal mail. Obviously, email hadn't even been invented for pub public use yet. It was being used like by IBM or NASA or whatever. But if you weren't one of them, you didn't have access. And so applying to colleges was like, I don't know, hiking through a cave blindfolded, you know, like there's no way to, to know what the heck was going on. So yeah, it's usually somewhere your parents went or your friends or relatives or something. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's so crazy. Let's go back to um, talking about, so if we have some high school or college kids that are watching this and they're thinking, you know, like, well, you know, her dad did all this stuff and she has the advantage and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, what, you know, because the people I, I struggled, I mean, I would be one of those kids right now be going, well, great, I'm glad she knows, but I have no clue. I mean, is there anything you can say to people like that, like I was when I was in high school and really, you know, didn't have a clue what I wanted to do, um, you know. To help them find direction. 
Yeah. And you said you're going to do some one-on-one coaching. What would you say to them to help them? What would you have them do? What would you have them, you know, how would you get them started? Well, first off, I would say everything is bigger than, bigger than you think, because you may not think, but your hobby that you really love right would take you into your next step. Because at first I just like writing. I never really realized that it could lead to a published book, to a coloring book, and just amazing opportunities getting to meet with all these different types of people. But just like I was advertising the other day on my Instagram, I was talking to people and I was like, first off, you need to figure out kind of what do you like and then dive deep into it and give yourself to it a 100%. Because if you don't focus on something 100% and you're trying to do more than one thing at the same time, <laughs> everything is not going to work. Because I, I, I'm the one of the persons that can be like great at whatever I do, but that's how my parents are. We can get like split up. And so you're not able to do everything 100%. It's only like 70 or 80%. But if you focus on one thing, give it your all, then that's going to give you connections because that's what really takes you into your future is starting to make connections with different people and learning from other people and taking their wisdom. And really don't be self-conscious. Just kind of go for it because no one is like you and no one else is you. So all you have to do is be you, do what you love, don't go do something that people are telling you to do because they just think that's what you want to do. Do what you want to do. Give it your all and you're going to be great. It makes yeah. a lot of sense. I see too many kids splitting their focus and their time between so many different activities and different sports and different hobbies and so on. And then they never really get good at anything and really get it, give it the shot that they need to figure out if they love it or not, because their, their focus is so split. So that's really good advice to limit and, and really dive in. Yeah, I think it's good to dive in. I think it's good to try a lot of different, you know, try a number of different things, and, but then find something that you really, really, maybe it's acting, maybe it's something like that, and then give it a go, like you say. So anyway. Other things, like I don't just write, but that's what my primary focus is. There's other things right. I just wrote, I'd probably get bored. I have to get experience. Like I'm on the absolutely and I'm doing um, but I'm not like freshman year, I was like, I'm gonna do every single club. This is gonna be great. But then I couldn't be like supposedly you want to be president of student council, you can't be president of every single club. You you, you could be in the art club but you don't necessarily have to be number one in the art club. Just do it for fun, you know? Right. There's other things you don't have to completely focus 100% on. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes so, sense. Yeah, you are the president of the student body, aren't you? Are on the student body right now at school? I don't think she heard that you asked her a question. Are you the president of student government in your high school? She may not be able to hear us. She, her internet may have gone out or something. Oop. There it goes. You predicted it. Yeah, because she because it really is people are out there shopping tonight and so forth. So that's good. I just, you know, I was really going to wrap it up anyway and just ask her if she had anything else that she wanted to add, that maybe something we hadn't asked her. But I just find I her. I think she's so coming back in. There yeah. she is. There she is. So she's so inspiring. And it's it's so, uh, you know, we had a conference recently, our writers conference. This has been my fourth year of attending and Kiera attended this year. And looks like she's there, but she can't, maybe can't hear us and, and can't speak. But um, okay, but well, she was we'll say good night then. Say one thing that she did, she came to the conference. Her dad was there as well. She's the youngest person at the conference at 17, right? But but she did. She was not afraid to hop from table to table. It was a virtual conference. Yeah. But you, they had pictures of little tables there and six. Um, seats at each table and so you could pop in there and she was popping all around and she'd go to a table and spend some time talking to people I mean she didn't come in and out very quickly but she came she spent some time developing relationships getting to know people and then she moved on so she was really doing a great job of networking and uh, you know getting people to know her and her getting to know people because I think one thing I, I think that Kira does and that's really smart is she realizes that to to be successful in what she wants to do at least what she thinks she wants to do now at 17 uh, to be you know a writer and a speaker and do all these things 
is she has an opportunity to be mentored by a lot of people that are much further along than she is. And so she really is taking um, um, advantage of that. And I think that a lot of young people are afraid to do that type of stuff. I think and there are a lot of adults that are afraid to do that. Oh, absolutely. There are a lot of adults um, that are afraid to do that. But, you know, but for a younger person to hang out with a bunch of old people, you know, right. older people and some of us old, um, but Kira just, she has that personality and she's not afraid to, I mean, you know, I didn't bite you yet, have I, or, and I haven't done anything, you know, of course we no. haven't been close for me to bite you, but, um, but, you know, I think that, you know, everybody's been very kind to her and, you know, what a group of people she has to be mentored by. And so for other young people, I would say that too, is that it's your parents know a lot, even though you may not think they do, um, you know, and they're friends. And if you, if there's something that interests you, like Kiera was saying, find someone that may be doing that, ask if you can spend a day with them, that you can shadow them for a day or two, that you can kind of get to know what it is that they do. Um, you know, because that's the best way you can, you know, you might think it sounds really cool to do that, but then when you, spend some time there and you're like, Oh, yeah, I don't like that so much. I right. It was, right. So now um, we, is that we can go and just video someone across the country that you think you want to do their career and kind of talk to them and kind of do like a mini interview. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So Kira, and the internet now gives us so many options with things to yeah. experience and, and, and visually chat. You're not just stuck on the phone. It's not just email, but, um, that's one, one of the little silver linings of this pandemic was that we have all figured out how we can video chat and stream from our homes. And we were in three different states doing this simultaneously. Absolutely. That's like Absolutely. geek nerd heaven. I love this. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking the same thing, Marcy, because most of us had it not been for the pandemic. We wouldn't have known. I didn't know how easy it was to do this. I mean, I'd FaceTime with people, but I didn't even group FaceTime. Like, I didn't even know you could do that. So. It's pretty amazing. Also, yeah, absolutely. The ability to connect and, and even as I've told job seekers and they're, you know, out looking for work, I said, well, you know, one good thing now is that you don't have to necessarily find a job in, you know, Long Island, New York or Raleigh, North Carolina or from right. in South Carolina where you're from, because there's opportunities to remote work now that were not there before this whole pandemic hit. Exactly. And, uh, so actually there is a huge silver lining there for people looking for work that are, in fact, I was reading an article um, in USA Today or another newspaper the other day, not that I get it, it was in the grocery store and I was standing in the Starbucks line and I picked it up and I looked at it, but it was a company in, you know, somewhere in North Carolina or something like that, that is now recruiting people out in Silicon Valley who would never have considered working for them before because they didn't want to leave that area and move here. But they, right. But now they, they can just do it this way. People. Yeah. That they would never have had that opportunity before. So, so there's huge opportunities. For I mean, my son did an internship, a paid engineering internship with NASA over the summer from my dining room table in New York. Wow. So he's having meetings. I don't think they used Zoom because NASA's got like special government secret password things. But there was a lot of security and they sent him a special laptop. And there was a lot of stuff that he wasn't allowed to tell us because, you know, it's NASA. Um, but he'd have these meetings with engineers and he'd, he'd be like, Mom, shh, because he's in the dining room. Don't say anything in the kitchen. Don't turn on the blender, you know, because he's got a meeting with all these engineers. This is actually freaking cool. So <laughs> it is. It is. And imagine he has that on his resume now that he interned right. with NASA. That's pretty cool. So, hey, uh, I think we should wrap it up here. Yeah. But I just want to say, Kira, I want to give you the last word here. Anything that you want to say to inspire. It doesn't have to be just high school kids, college kids, anybody out there. Um, anything that you want to add um, based on your experience and, and where you see yourself going in the future. I just want to say kind of tying in what you guys are saying. There's so jobs that are opening up so many different careers that are opening up just in the past couple years like even the author speaker coach I didn't even know that was a thing until um I started becoming more aware about it so be creative and do what you want to do because certain jobs weren't even a thing a year ago and there's absolutely so open up this year so many different careers so keep an open mind and go out do what you want to do and be you and no one else. 
Love that. Love that. Keep an open mind. Very wise. See you, no one else. That is great advice, Kira. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you, Kira. Your dad thank you. and your mom and, and awesome. your grandparents, everybody. Hello. And we wish them a happy Thanksgiving. And hopefully we'll uh, touch base with you again sometime um, later this year. Okay. Absolutely. Here. Thanks so much, Kira. Be well. Lovely to see everybody here. Bye -bye. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.